I'd like to welcome everyone back to our Bible study for the Abington Press's Adult Bible Study Teacher Guide is what I'm uh, writing, and we're looking at uh, six discrete uh, pericopes or passages or texts from the Gospel of Mark, which will be part of the adult Bible study lesson for Lent and beyond, basically the spring quarter of 2022. Usually we do the lectionary, the Revised Common Lectionary, which has four different texts to it every week. One from the Hebrew Scriptures, one from the Psalms, one from the Epistles or the Book of Acts, and then one lesson from the Gospels. But for the next 13 weeks, we are going to take the text that I've been given from Abington, and uh, we're going to take a look at these texts and try to do so with uh, some depth. Uh, our lesson today is the second uh, one of the series of 13. It is, uh, excuse me, I need to fix this. Uh, it is uh, chapter 9, and it begins at the 38th verse and goes to 50. So pardon me for not having that up there earlier. Um, this is a text that uh, talks about several things. One is an exorcism, but it's not so much about <coughs> an exorcism as it's about the authority to carry out an exorcism. And so when we look at uh, chapter 9, the first thing that we see is that John said to Jesus. Now, this is fairly unusual. In fact, I believe it's the only place where John, one of the sons of Zebedee, acts on his own without acting in concert with either his brother or his family or the rest of the disciples. He independently, in and of himself, um, he comes to Jesus and he says, teacher or rabbi, we saw someone throwing demons uh, out in your name and we tried to stop him because he wasn't following us. Um, interesting kind of question. This is an issue of uh, protecting turf. In this particular case, religious turf. We have the Jesus intimate followers, the disciples, those who are always with him. And then we have uh, the regular disciples, which are anybody that wants to learn from Jesus. And so when it talks about the crowds, there are many disciples in those crowds. And then we have those that are just your average hoi polloi. They are curious bystanders, Whatever's going on, they go there. They're people that love the carnival, love the mall, go to sporting events, go to NASCAR. They just do whatever everybody else is doing. But in this particular case, John is speaking for uh, the 12, essentially. We will see this in the Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, quite a bit, where one person speaks on behalf of the whole. Uh, usually it's Peter. Uh, you remember last week, uh, Jesus asked uh, a question, and then Jesus asked another question, who do you say that I am? And Peter, of course, answers correctly, you are the Christ, you are the Messiah. And, uh, and then Jesus tells the disciples what that is to mean, and then he is rebuked by Peter, who is rebuking Jesus on behalf of all the disciples. Uh, when Peter's coming down the Mount of Transfiguration, he says for uh, James and John, he speaks for them. He says, it, it is good that we are here. Let us build a dwelling or a booth uh, to commemorate this moment. And so often 
Peter is the spokesperson for the group. He asks a question, he makes a statement, but he's doing it on behalf of the other 11 that are with them. Well, in this particular case, John is the one who is asking the questions, and this is very unusual. Uh, I'm not sure anyone knows the reason for it, but it is a way that Mark is breaking the pattern uh, that usually holds where Peter will speak for all. Here, John is speaking for all. He says, teacher, rabbi, we saw someone throwing out demons, casting out demons in your name. In other words, in the name of Jesus, leave this person. Uh, is, is what this... Uh, what this unauthorized demon caster outer is doing. And, and so the disciples really aren't sure what to do with this. They don't like it. And so they tried to prevent the guy. And we tried to stop him because he wasn't following us. That's a very interesting tell there at the very end. He wasn't, John speaking to Jesus, and he says, because he was not, that is the person casting out the demons, was not following. And we would expect him to say you because he was talking to Jesus. But he doesn't. He says, uh, because uh, he wasn't following us. In other words, there's a little group. It's like a clique. They're insiders and outsiders. This person wasn't <clears throat> an insider. And therefore, we decided that we should try to stop what he was doing. Um, and so you wonder, what, how is Jesus going to respond to this? This is uh, one of those situations where the disciples seem like they're completely clueless about the message that Jesus has been giving them, that they should love one another and, and all that kind of business. Here they're trying to protect their turf, their apostolic turf. So Jesus replies to them, he says, don't stop him. No one who does powerful acts in my name can quickly turn around and curse me. In other words, Jesus is saying, if this person is doing powerful uh, things in my name, then certainly he isn't uh, an opponent. He is someone who is doing good for people in my name. How can that be a bad thing? I want to share with you um, a situation where, <clears throat> and Mark obviously knows the Hebrew scriptures quite well, and he may be alluding to this Particular thing. There was a fellow named Eldad and Medad, and this text is Numbers 11, 26 through 29. And instead of going into the tent of meeting with Moses and Aaron and a lot of the other Hebrew leaders, they prophesied in the camp of the Israelites, which was uh, adjacent to the tent uh, of meaning. And uh, Joshua urges Moses to stop these two from uh, prophesying. And uh, Moses takes kind of a tolerant attitude and he says, are you jealous for my sake? Would that all of the Lord's people be prophets and the Lord would put his spirit on them. In other words, Moses is saying, these people are doing good things. They don't do it exactly like everyone else is doing it, but they're doing good things. We should not hinder them. Wouldn't it be great if more people did better things as these two? <coughs> that may be a situation uh, that uh, Mark is alluding to in this text. And then he says something that is very interesting. I. Uh, who uh, he says, whoever isn't against us is for us. Now, in the other two synoptic gospels, Matthew and Luke, the text is uh, basically, whoever is not with me is against me. And so it says it in the opposite way. Uh, 
it's kind of a conundrum to have two gospels or two of uh, three gospels contradict uh, the first one. But uh, the, the point is in Mark is that those who do good things in the name of Jesus, we should not hinder them and let them do what they need. Uh, I assure you that whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ will certainly be rewarded. <clears throat> and so this issue is that not only does Jesus, in a way, sort of bless the guy that is doing that, good things, casting out demons in his name, but he also uh, gives us this idea that if one is a missionary and one needs help, that someone who gives a cup of water to a thirsty person will surely not lose his or her reward, which in some senses can be the reward of the blessing of Jesus or entrance into the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God or something along those lines. Uh, what's interesting is that cup of cold water here just means uh, a gracious act towards someone who needs something like clothing for the naked, uh, like uh, a visit in jail, like um, a piece of bread for someone who is hungry. It's, it's on that kind of level that a person will not lose his or her reward. Uh, later on, however, in the Gospels, all of them, uh, cup becomes the cup of suffering. And we will see this in the next few weeks where Jesus says, can you drink the cup that I drink? And when Jesus talked about cup in that particular case, it is the cup of suffering, uh, of being accused of things that he is not guilty of, of being whipped and scourged and uh, eventually uh, crucified. And then of course we have uh, the rest of the story. So I'm going to stop at this point and we will pick up with uh, verse 42 when we get back uh, together uh, later this week. So thank you for being with us today.